A late winter storm brought hail, thunder and lightning across the county. The first major rainfall we've seen in more than a month, which leads to the question, will that make a dent in our rain deficit? A sizable one at least. Thanks for joining us for the nightly check in. I'm Catherine Garcia. Hectic like at work, hail. We didn't expect that and it's crazy. We don't work in these conditions. It was a combination of heavy rain and hail and lightning from the inland areas to the coast throughout the day. Still remnants of the storm Wednesday night with scattered showers in some areas. So what does all the rain mean for San Diego? Well, today we spoke to water resources specialist Goldie Herbon, and she says that while our region does not rely heavily on rainwater for our water supply, it does make a nice contribution, especially in a year that could be shaping up to be a second consecutive dry year. San Diego County has over 24 drinking water reservoirs. So any rain that falls within those watersheds that have reservoirs will be an enhancement to our water supplies. So any rain is great. We did experience a dry year last year, but this year we still have the rest of March to go before the end of the rainy season, so it's not quite over just yet. We are tracking the weather and have a dedicated section on the main menu of our Roku and Apple TV app. Just head to weather at the very top of the menu, where Dagmar will have a breakdown of the storm and conditions for Thursday. Well, we have learned several new details about what led up to the deadly crash near the border in Imperial County. 13 people died and a dozen others were injured when an SUV with 25 people inside crashed with a semi truck yesterday morning. An investigation into human smuggling is now underway. The Mexican consulate says at least 10 people inside the SUV were Mexican nationals and at least two from Guatemala. A member, a family member of two of the victims says his sister and niece risked their lives for a chance at a better life in the U.S. It's so hard. I mean, like, there's so many things on our, our, our brain. I mean, like, I don't know how she will handle this. A vigil is scheduled for tomorrow at Chicano Park for the crash victims. Now to the latest on the coronavirus, and there is some good news. The one millionth vaccination was given in San Diego today. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says they vaccinated 100% of seniors at skilled nursing facilities and 70% of our health care workers. While our case rate this week did not improve enough to move us from the purple to the red tier, there are expectations that will happen in the next few weeks. Governor Newsom says California is waiting, meanwhile, on more Johnson & Johnson vaccines expected next week. The governor spoke at a press conference in Long Beach today. He says the state has gotten about 20,000 Johnson & Johnson doses this week, but is expecting more than 300,000 doses next week. He said there is one main thing holding the state back from getting more shots into arms. The only constraint of us providing more vaccine to more people in a much quicker and expedited manner and also an equitable manner is manufactured supply. The governor says nearly nine and a half million doses have been administered in California this week. One and a half million more doses are expected to come. Liquid handling robots might be able to detect positive COVID-19 cases and prevent outbreaks. This is according to researchers at UC San Diego. Early on in the pandemic, UCSD researchers found that COVID-19 is detectable in wastewater. It was a long and slow process. Well, this was until they automated liquid handling robots to be able to go through sewage samples and detect the virus. The system can process as many as 24 samples every 40 minutes and then pinpoint a single positive case in a building of about 500 people. San Diego Comic-Con announced once again they have to cancel the in-person convention this summer and to local vendors, it's just another hit during the pandemic. Matt Berger and his wife own the mysterious Galaxy Bookstore in the Midway District. He says their booth at Comic-Con is bigger than any Black Friday. While they've learned to adapt through online sales, he says he supports the decision to cancel this year's event, no matter how much it hurts his bottom line. We really look forward to getting back to everything safely in 2022. That will be the moment where it's like normalcy is here. We sure hope so. Comic-Con organizers say they'll once again host some virtual events this summer, but say they're working on a smaller in-person event for November. Today is World Wildlife Day, and the San Diego Zoo is using the occasion to rebrand itself as San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. With that new name will come an increased focus on conservation. Right now, the zoo is a partner and collaborator with nearly 200 conservation organizations around the world, and they want to increase that reach. The zoo is moving in the direction anyway, but then the pandemic really accelerated the change.
2020 was our wake up call. The pandemic is really a symptom of that nature is out of balance. And I look at 2021 as our turning point. We're really putting a strong effort forward to focus on safeguarding biodiversity and really trying to reestablish that balance with nature. The San Diego Zoo and Safari Park will keep the same names, but their continued successful operation will help fund those conservation efforts. It's the beginning of an era for a group of penguins in Chicago. These four penguins took a little bit of a field trip to the Friends Experience on Michigan Avenue at the Shedd Aquarium. They got a private tour of the Chicago-based replica of the TV show's iconic set. You can see the replicas of the famous New York Friends apartments. The rest of Chicago can experience this Friends experience when it reopens to the public March 17th. Let's get into it for our nightly check-in. Have a good night.